Today we're going to talk about constant velocity and how that means zero acceleration and then we'll get into what positive acceleration looks like and what negative acceleration looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is just draw a quick graph of velocity versus time and kind of talk about the things that we should know. Uh, here we have a velocity versus time graph where the object's change in velocity is constant. It's not, not going up, not going down, has no slope. And what I know about that is that the acceleration equals the change in velocity over time. That is the equation that works for this graph. And the slope of this graph is zero. So my acceleration is zero, and I can represent that on my acceleration versus time graph with a zero line. So here my acceleration is zero meters per, zero meters per second squared, and the acceleration equals zero. So that means there is no change in velocity change of velocity equals zero. That's the main point of those two graphs. So let's take a look at a velocity versus time graph and talk about the things I know. I know that an acceleration equals slope of a velocity versus time graph. If the slope equals zero, then it should be a horizontal line. Those are the things I should know, you should know. And so we're going to do three examples. We're going to have three horizontal lines, one in the positive quadrant, one right on the zero line and one in the negative quadrant. So let's look at the first line. That first line has what we call a positive velocity. It is a velocity versus time graph. So since it's a velocity versus time graph and that line is in the positive quadrant, it has a positive velocity. So we're going to look at what that looks like on a position versus time graph. And that should be a positive line. You can see that the slope of the position versus time graph is positive. So therefore I should have a positive slope. The slope of a position versus time graph is velocity. Looking at the second line, we have a zero velocity. The velocity versus time graph, the line is on zero, so therefore I should have a zero slope. And when I draw the line on my graph, I have a zero slope line for a position versus time graph. And then we'll look at the negative velocity one. It's in the negative quadrant, so it has a negative velocity because it's a velocity versus time graph, and therefore on the position versus time graph, it should have a negative slope because the slope of a position versus time graph is velocity. And there we are. What's up? Sorry about that. Somebody just walked in my class, I had to pause my recording, and you got to hear what's up. So here we go. Now we're going to talk about positive acceleration. And a positive acceleration is a little bit more difficult to represent. It's not overly difficult, but basically our acceleration versus time graph uh, should, should be a flat line, but the velocity is changing in, in the positive direction, so it should be in the positive quadrant of our acceleration versus time graph. And how we look at positive acceleration, it, it's easy to, easier to see on a velocity versus time graph. So I'm giving you an example here where on the velocity versus time graph we have a, a, a line with a positive slope. And this line, velocity starts at zero and becomes big and more positive, big and positive. And then underneath that line, we call that area under the curve, whether it's a line or a curve, we just call it under, area under the curve, is going to be positive and therefore we can tell from the graph that the displacement is also positive. So the area under this curve or this line, you can see it's in the shape of a triangle. And it's in the positive quadrant, so if we, and we took the area of that triangle and doing one half base times height, came up with a number, we would have a positive number, which means our displacement, our change in position, was in a positive direction. And our velocity was also positive. So we were changing our, our speed, our velocity, in the positive direction. And those are important things to notice from this graph, so our displacement there is positive. And let's see what that looks like on a position versus time graph. What we should know is that velocity equals slope of a position versus time graph. And so let me run this back a little bit. Velocity starts at zero is the thing I underlined there. So on my position versus time graph, I have a zero sloped line. 
because the velocity equals the slope of a position versus time graph. And then the next thing I can do is I have on there that it becomes big and positive. So my next line needs to be a very positive line at the end of the graph. So it starts at zero and becomes very big and positive. And something happens in between there. So what we end up doing is drawing a line and connecting those so that it shows that the object is accelerating. If we have a positive acceleration, the object is accelerating. You've gotten in your car, you've turned on the car, with you put the key in the ignition, turned it on, you put it in drive, and then you press the accelerator, and you started at zero because you were in park, and you have accelerated to get going. This is an example of that. And we're going forward in a positive direction, for example. And so that's what we're representing here. You can see that right that part of the line is a zero slope, and this part of the line is a very positive slope. And so that represents exactly what is occurring. So let's look at another example where the velocity starts negative, a very big negative area, area or sorry, not area, a very big negative number, and then becomes zero. So we're going to stop. So if we take the area under that curve, under that line, we'll call it a curve still, the area under there is, is displacement, and it's a negative area. Therefore, it gives me a negative displacement. Uh, those three dots, just so you know, when I put three dots like that in a triangular form, that means a therefore. At least it does to me, so you'll get used to that, um, rather than writing the word therefore every time. Uh, so well, let's look at position versus time graph. I know the velocity starts big and negative. So the beginning of my position versus time graph should have a big and negative slope. And there it is. Make it all blue. And then it becomes zero. So I should have the end of my graph be zero. And so I have a zero represented slope. And then I need to connect those because what happens in between there is basically I was moving in the negative direction and I'm slowing down to a stop. My velocity at the end of my motion is zero. So I had to come to a stop. At the beginning of that motion there, I have a big negative number. So if I have a big number, I'm going fast. I just happen to be going fast in the negative direction. And I'm coming to a stop. So I'm decelerating here. But it's still a positive acceleration because I was going in the negative direction and slowing down. Teachers, part of this interruption, please remember to show the... Sorry about that. Um, so I'm, I'm moving in the negative direction in order to be traveling with a high velocity in the negative direction. So I'm going negative 20. To slow down negative 20, I have to counter it with a positive acceleration, which basically it's in the opposite direction, and therefore it will slow it down. So we have a positive acceleration slowing an object down that is traveling in the negative direction. I hope that's not too confusing. Let's make this line look a little bit prettier. And then, so for, since velocity equals slope, I have a very negative slope here, and then I have a zero slope at the end, and that coincides with what my velocity versus time graph was looking like. Now let's talk about negative acceleration. Again, a little bit more difficult <clears throat> excuse me, than zero acceleration, but it's still something that can be done. So zero acceleration, I'm sorry, negative acceleration, we have an, a line in the negative quadrant of the acceleration versus time graph. And basically velocity becomes more negative. And the slope of a velocity versus time graph is also going to be negative. So let's represent those. We're going to draw two graphs of velocity versus time. The first one, we're going to show deceleration. In this deceleration, we start very big and positive. Okay, So we're going to have a positive area, which means we're going in the positive direction. Our change in position is in the positive direction. We have a very big and positive velocity, and it's going to zero. So we must be slowing down to get to zero. So velocity starts real big, real positive, 
and we go to zero, so we must be decelerating. We must be slowing down. So how we represent that on the position versus time graph, again, is we start very big and positive at the beginning, a very positive slope, and we finish with a zero slope. And you can see that this object is slowing down. It goes to a stop. It just happens to be doing it in a positive direction. So we have positive displacement. How you find displacement from a velocity versus time graph is by finding the area. On a position versus time graph, uh, it, it's a little bit easier to see. You can see that it went to the positive direction. It had a positive slope. And that's the velocity. So positive velocity there. Um, here we go. Moving on to the next one. We have a line that's going in the negative quadrant of a velocity versus time graph, and velocity starts at zero and then becomes negative, a very big negative number. The area under this curve is also negative, so that means we are moving in a negative direction. So we have negative displacement. And since this is a negative acceleration, it looks like we are speeding up in the negative direction. So we have now gotten in our car, turned it on, started from, you know, park, put it in drive, and just jumped on the accelerator to go really fast in reverse. So we're accelerating in the negative direction. Um, we know that velocity is the slope of a position versus time graph, so a position versus time graph should represent that. We should start at zero slope and finish at a very negative slope, and we should be able to connect our line into a curved form. Any time an object is accelerating, the position versus time graph will be a curve, and the velocity versus time graph will be a line, a line with a slope. That is important to recognize. The other thing that I want you to recognize is happy sad graphs. So let's talk about what happy sad graphs are. Bad eyes there. We'll try again. There we go. This is a happy graph. And this is a sad graph. Let's move those eyes up. Here we go. Those are happy sad graphs. What you're seeing there, if you look at the graphs here, Both of these complete the sad graphs. You can see that at this side it goes up and then over here it goes down. They are the two parts of the sad graph. Since it, the sad graphs open downward, that means they have negative acceleration. The happy graphs open upward, so they will have positive acceleration. They open upward. So any, any position versus time graph, these have to be position versus time. Any position versus time graph that is a curve is accelerating, and you can quickly recognize the acceleration by which way the curve opens, either up or down. It's either positive acceleration or negative acceleration. But to describe their motion is a little bit more difficult, so that's why we did the whole slope part of the position versus time graphs and velocity versus time graphs, because you're going to have to be able to describe this and say that, you know, I'm accelerating in the negative direction or I'm decelerating in the positive direction and things of that nature. So uh, we'll get some more practice with this uh, in class.